Good evening. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 35. Is it really episode 35? Of the worst talk show. Not quite midlife 35, but definitely a geriatric pregnancy if you got pregnant. <sighs> Welcome to Wednesday, everybody. You know what that means. Tomorrow's Little Friday, and then it's the weekend. We try to speed things up for everybody here on the show. <laughs> uh, the Worst Talk Show, I've done something ridiculous with my hair, and I wasn't sure I was going to show you guys. Uh, so, yeah, that'll, that'll happen at some point, I guess. I don't know. It's very sort of Helga, Heidi-ish. I'm maybe, not... Maybe you'll turn butter later. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Oh, super handsome boyfriend, dude, yeah. We're going to get calls. We're going to get letters now from our... From angry Germans? What? Or, or a Swedish, you know, our, our no, Norwegian uh, contingent, if you will. Uh, so episode 35, welcome to it. We have a lot to get to. Um, if you guys were following um, the uh, Worst Talk Show Facebook page earlier today, or perhaps mine... Um, we had a little Rammstein incident this morning. Now, for those of you uninitiated to the band Rammstein, Du hast, du hast make. Uh, they are a band that came out with a huge song, I want to say in the late 90s, right? Mm -hmm. um, Early and, 2000s. And yeah, it was, it was very jamming. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like, it was industrial and catchy at the same time it was really fantastic so it's actually really great actually uh, actually now i have no idea what the band's up to or what their like political leanings are or anything like that that's Just a great thing FYI. about listening to something in german you have no idea <laughs> um so uh i can't necessarily speak for is it the best thing to do to listen to now i don't know um but i think that uh the consensus was that um people listen to it when they want to like go into war yeah i had to get, get psyched up. up you know so, so dave tell them why you got you had to have the Ramshin jamathon oh well i was uh i've got a project i'm working on for my lovely girlfriend uh it is a desk for working at home. But definitely. And uh, yeah. And she wants it done today. Well, I didn't finish it today, guys. I didn't say that it had to be done today, honey. She said yesterday. Lewis Warren, oh my God, everybody's going so fast. You guys just came up on the feed. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna backtrack. So Smitty's here. Uh, Lewis Warren, Nikki, Nikki T, T punching in, Sammy. Sam Evola. Um, oh, Nikki T agrees. You're okay with it? Jim Paracotti okay, rhymes with Manicotti. Wasn't sure. He's got a great Hey, Vicky. Vicky, I saw that you hung out with our girl Tanya the other day. Super jealous. Um, who else is here? Bob Tarasi. Uh, all right, Lewis says he thinks uh, Rammstein is pretty liberal. So we're going to go with that for now. Riddles. Riddles. Sorry, I was driving back from Amherst last week, so I missed it. Here today, do hot. By the so, way, yeah. so this morning I'm, I'm working. It's early. I clock in at like 745 in the morning because it's in my dining room um, and I can wear my PJs and I can hear someone jamming to Romstein or as Ed B said, Jamstein. Uh, and it sounds like it's coming from the second floor, not the third floor. Our bedroom is all the way up top. We rent a townhouse. And the second floor is Kendall and Colin. So the, the two teenagers are on the second floor and they share a bathroom. And it really sounded like it was coming from the second floor. And I was like, there's no way they're into Rammstein. I mean, I did catch Kendall listening to Bikini Girl on her own the other day, which was like, great ball Bik moment. Bikini Kill. I'm sorry, Bikini Rebel Kill, Girl. Rebel Girl. Yeah. Um, I know what you did. Like, I was so excited, but I was like, I don't think that she's hit the industrial phase of her rebellion yet. Guys, um, I'll tell you, it was it was just a Deutschland uh, moment. Because mm. right after I finished with Rammstein, I listened to the Scorpions. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So he, it was a surprise. It was day of false alarm. No teenagers were freaking no out. No need to Ramstein. be afraid. I'm just, you know. 
get myself psyched up. Oh my God, Riddle said I look amazing. Let me tell you something, Casey. I went to get ready and my hair just looked like, I was like, I don't have the energy to straighten it. I don't have the energy to do anything. And I just started doing the braids. And then I put it up like in the back, like Helga, you know? And um, Dave got a little too excited. So we're gonna I was bring like, it back I'm now. ready for my all over massage now. Thank you very much. <laughs> all I could think of was, do you remember the uh, chick on the TV show Benson, where she was always trying to get Benson in the bath? Like she was like, oh, Mr. Benson, can I wash your back for you? Uh, that's all I could think of. So maybe I that's don't remember I'm that. Channeling. I wasn't her name, Helga. Somebody I help don't me. Remember. Some of you old people that grew up watching Benson, which my God was that would not fly today in any way yeah thanks um, casey yeah you look okay too <laughs> vicky says haven't seen tanya in over a year we made a plan for a walk with the dog that's it's so great and i love that we're finally getting to do stuff like that again um yeah rheinstein, rheinstein is like german ministry perfect smitty perfect uh example for the uninitiated um but it's, just, <laughs> it's the same reason i like oh michael maloney you are Michael Maloney says, you look great, but Dave looks like Fred Durst. Uh, first of all, he did it all for the Dookie, obviously. Uh, and he's a little overworked. He was out in the sun all day. So I wouldn't, let him, you guys, I wouldn't let him go upstairs and change or do anything because I knew the second he walked by that bed, it was all over and I'd be hosting the show Han Solo again. And I was like, nope, you're not yeah. going upstairs. Um, you can't really make Benson anymore or Dukes of Hazard. You know, you'd think so. And yet somehow they'll try to make it happen. Um, so I was uh, looking for some extra stuff to talk about, about things to watch. And Lewis Warren took me up on it and talked about uh, Los Spookies, which is Fred Armisen. It's a, it's a show in Espanol uh, on HBO. We haven't, we haven't checked it out yet. And partially... Uh, that's because I don't normally like to mix comedy with supernatural. I like faux serious supernatural because I'm, you know, that kind of nerd. You're very serious, um, like a peak cream. Holly Cantor, peak creams are a very serious cookie. I call, uh, yeah, Holly, I was out in the cold. It turned cold. It was nice yeah. out earlier. He's building me uh, a new desk for my little office work from home space in our dining room. And he's building a, uh, would you say it's a Mandalorian desk? Oh, it's a straight Boba Fett desk. It's straight Boba Fett. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and he's been working hard all day and out in the sun. And he may just keel over at some point tonight during the broadcast. Da not to worry. He's not sick. He's just very tired. I'm just currently having my knee scoped. As we sit here. Um, so has anybody else watched Los Espookies? Um, I'll definitely check it out because La uh, Lewis Warren said it's hilarious. Um, I, but like I said, you know, this is something. I mean, the only exception where you want to mix like supernatural and horror with comedy, Shaun of the Dead. Like I have no problem right. with Shaun of the Dead. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, it's Could watch repeatedly. Nick Frost and Simon Pegg, man. They're um, okay. Oh, uh, your sister's on telling you to hydrate. Thank Hi, you, Sharon. Sharon. Uh, Lewis Ward, mixed English and Spanish subtitles for both. So that's nice. So far, more fake horror, ridiculous humor. I, I think this is the wave of the future. The uh, English and Spanish together with subtitles is, is definitely going to be, we're going to see so much more I like of this. It. I don't care. Um, I we, don't care what anyone says. We've been watching I it. like it. We've been watching a bunch of sci-fi that's multilingual. Yo gusto. Um, and has the subtitles. And we now watch everything with subtitles anyway, because we always miss something. And you know what else I like? Knowing how to spell a character's name. Because you never know. Right. And also, sometimes you don't know who the character is. You know what I mean? You're like, and it yes, explains and it to you. it can spoil a little bit yeah. uh, at times. Ethan, who are, is our junior executive producer, uh, Tachi, yet not related to Tachi, mind blown. Yeah. Um, he saw two episodes of it and it stuck with me after watching them at 2 a.m. So it's got that. All right. So everybody, uh, we'll all watch that together and come back next week and tell Lewis how awesome he was or how stupid for recommending Les Spookies. Good? See. What else did we watch? 
Oh, or, or we should just talk. To, oh, guys. Oh my God. Guys, Erica Arivo, is that her name? Jessica no, Arivo? Jessica, I think. She played uh, 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 Harriet Tubman. She played. She was in that Stephen King yeah, show. Yeah, she was in the, um, the Outsider. She was the, um, the, um, the mystic there. The, yeah, the, uh, and she was so cool. Um, she was so, in uh, Bad Times at the uh, L whatever the hell that movie was. El Royale? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's an incredible actress. And I had heard that National Geographic, they do this genius series. They've done Albert Einstein. Mm. Um, I think they even did like Hitler or something, didn't they? I or don't some know. Some kind of Nazi thing. But um, this new season is all about Aretha Franklin and she plays Aretha. And they mix, you know, some live footage and whatever, but it's mostly retelling of the story. And it's so well done. Like, so well done. Um, Casey dove Riddles, like the characters on this show, Dove and Amber? Yeah, us. And, 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 what? And Amber. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I think he's off his meds. <laughs> uh, Cynthia the... Arrivo is what is Vicky Cynthia? says. Yeah. Well, she, she spelled Cynthia, but I, I don't know. We're not going to hold it against you, Vicky. Don't worry. Typo. Uh, Smitty's already all in with Aretha. Of course you are, Detroit. It's boy. awesome, dude. It's, it's awesome. so good. It's it's uh, and of course the music is spectacular, but it's not Aretha singing. Uh, I assume it's the car. It's uh, this actress singing. It jumps back and forth in time. Yeah, Sean O'Brien says I just saw that it existed. I was intrigued but worried. As were we. As Sean. were we. It's we we like rip through two or three. Jump episodes in with both last feet, night. buddy. Yeah. Do it. And it's all available now to stream. Like you can binge the whole thing. Yeah, you don't it's, have to wait. You don't have to watch it episodically, which is so I hate waiting. Mm -hmm. I don't like waiting. Don't like doing it anymore. No. Nope, not at all. Uh, Cynthia Arrivo. Thank you, Vicky. I, I think at this point, you're all our honorary, uh, you know, producers <laughs> because you help so much with the content of the show. But um, Vicky gets the uh, ass assistant producer. Assistant, um, assistant, assistant. Uh, badge to assistant today. Producer. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely check out Aretha. Um, it's just, and they don't pull punches either. There's a lot going on. Yeah, there's stuff uh, you didn't know about Aretha. A lot of stuff. Um, questionable stuff. Also, David Cross plays uh, Jerry Wexler, the famous and he's producer. Good. He's great. Yeah, no, it's it's really, it's well done all around. Um, so. Okay. Go ahead. How about something else that we watched and... I kind of wasn't expecting a whole lot. <laughs> Vicky T, her pimp husband, smack a T, smack, smack. Right. They're hilarious. Go ahead. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Snow, uh, the Winter Soldier. Now we keep calling it Falcon and Snowman, which was the weird Sean Penn, this Timothy Hutton America. movie from the 80s where oh. they were spies. David Bowie um, did a song. So uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, no, 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 no. Dave had been like, no, no, a couple different times. And then mm. I was like, all right, honey, let's just get this over with. Uh, and what, what did you think? It was like a film. Yeah. I, it was like the production quality was a Marvel movie. Yeah. It's the special effects are great. That, that There's big, huge, nothing um, cheap about the show. You know, the, the big chase jet fighter and you actually, know, whatever dog I, fight was my, amazing. I, yeah, I actually, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really good, and I feel like it's a little. Uh, while I appreciated Wandavision, <laughs> it's better than Wandavision. This is better. I think this is better. It's more well suited. I mean, Wandavision was a think piece, right? Let's be honest. Um, I this think. is this is just like bam, bam, bam. And I love that. Um, you know, Falcon. Almost the whole first episode is Falcon. You don't mm -hmm. get to see Bucky. Uh, AKA formerly known artist, formerly known as the Winter Soldier, uh, very much at all, which is just fine by me. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, I'm not too crazy about that character anyway. Yeah. Um, Casey says that Bucky deserves the shield, but he Heck wasn't no. given the shield. Yeah, no. So no. I think that's wrong. So we're not going to do any big spoilers, but if you're a Marvel fan uh, and you have Disney Plus, or if you don't, make friends with somebody who does um and definitely check out falcon and winter soldier i think it's i think it's the whole thing's gonna be great i just wish we could binge it all at once but i get it i'm getting my chops busted by this uh casey riddle's character why what is riddle saying i made the i made the 
the dive. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of did the. But you said, I said jump, in jump in with both feet. You know. Really, we're gonna nitpick riddles. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. I don't think so. Thanks a lot. That's it. I quit. Uh, space race continues with the alternate universe of for all mankind. If you have Apple TV Plus and you're not on this show, get on this show. It's fabulous. Um, there's a whole first season Fun you can binge, stuff. and we're on like episode nine probably now, so you can yeah. really, uh, you know, get it all and catch up. What's the name of the, um, the uh, guy from New Zealand, the, the actor? Uh, who the plays, one who plays uh, the Patriot. Gordo. Plays the Patriot. Yes. Yeah, uh, I wrote it down last week, but I don't have. Did anyone comment. pick up and start watching the Patriot? Anybody? 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 Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I will notice things that people will go, oh, I finally got around to watching this. And some of them are you. And I feel like, shouldn't they like maybe mention that we mentioned it? I mean, Sam Avola, you are awesome. You do this all the time. I'm mm, not talking to a you. A bit of but, credit. Yeah, you know, nice. it might be nice. Might get more people to, I don't know, watch the show so they can get recommendations. Are you because... saying that the time jump in season two of For All Mankind? was strange huh i don't think it was i mean it was a little jarring i sort of knew ahead of time it was happening um but i think once you get into it it's fine mm. but uh you know we can fight later if you like listen sammy lighten up you know <laughs> okay so i uh suspend that disbelief baby i did a deep dive into uh some chick flick action over on netflix chick on chick action unfortunately no Although there's a terrible amount of hugging and hand-holding, but alas. Uh, Catherine Heigl and Sarah Chalk. The show is called Firefly Lane. Uh, you've probably seen a million promos for it. Went, mm, I'll pass, I'll pass. And then they caught me at a vulnerable, weak moment. And I needed to hide upstairs because I didn't want to eat um and she wanted to cry alone and so i decided i would i would do the deep dive into firefly lane and i loved it every episode by the end of the episode they gave you a little like cliffhanger where you were like oh well yes i'll watch the next episode and before you know it you're like seven episodes in it's almost like beaches in a way not as you know but yeah the so, friend and the famous friend. Yeah, I'm curious if anybody else has seen it. Um, Lewis Warren, you wouldn't, that would not Casey, be, that'd be an radar. awesome show. It's a chick flick thing. Scrubs meets Knocked Up, that'd be great. But that's kind of, you know, I mean, Sarah Talk is amazing. They play two friends that grow up across the street from each other. Uh, one of them is uh, now a famous uh, talk show host and the other um, decided to, you know, marry a journalist instead of, uh, you know, continuing to be one and then had a child and sort of, you know, stopped working. So there's like the weird quirky and then there's the super damaged, but also super famous. Mm. But there's a lot of, uh, you know, little mysteries going on there. And I, I actually really, it took, the bottom line is if you need something to take your mind off crap, especially if you're not trying to overeat, uh, this would be a great thing for you. If it's, if it's, even a, a sniff up your alley, then I think uh, you could do it. Are you sniffing up my alley again? I'm always sniffing up your alley. I'm feeling kind of sassy in my braids. Don't mind telling you, like sort of the Swiss Miss Coco girl. Thank you. Oh my God. Did you guys see what my sister bought me today? I have been eyeing the, um, so we're a ninja appliance family now officially. we just started we got the, because we got the kendall the, got the, the coffee machine it's not a coffee machine dave it's a coffee station station yeah uh the ninja coffee station and i've been eyeballing the ninja version of the bullet which is called like the foodie um blend something basically it makes smoothies and it makes smoothie bowls but you can also do like kind of faux ice creams you can extract juice from stuff like it's super powerful um so i told my sister Guys, on the phone that swirls. i had been looking wow. at it uh but hadn't you know bit the bullet and and actually uh bought it and a knock on the door today there's like there's a package for you and he holds it up and he's like it's the ninja isn't this the blender you want thinking i ordered it i was like oh anyway this is my uh protein shake which is so delightful and uh tastes now like a, an awesome milkshake 
So I'm very happy. And we're definitely going to bring, uh, let's all go to the smoothies back, maybe even next week. Um, I was thinking we could do, uh, let's all go to the smoothies for the Snyder Cut, although technically we already watched it. Did you guys watch it? All right, look. It was like I didn't see the other movie. Like, <clears throat> I put the Snyder... Let's I, be honest. I, I put us Justice really League saw out of my movie. head. Okay? I saw it. I don't know if I made it through the whole thing. Because it was terrible. It was um, just disjointed and not we're good. We're talking about Justice League. The original right. version of Justice League was a so piece guys, of poop. The Snyder Cut. It's over four hours long. It's four mi- It's like four hours and two minutes. Uh, James Melanson, we have a ninja. Look out! Um, you can skip the first hour entirely. There's a lot of slow motion. It, it's and way too it's like a party. Too, like, yeah. Eh. Do we really but need? What I mean, yeah. what an improvement though. He's talk about fleshing it out. Yeah, I mean the la- like I said, the last two and a half hours cooked, and there was a lot going on. I really enjoyed it. There were <laughs> characters we didn't even know about really. Yeah. Uh, the first time around. Um, definitely yeah. flesh a lot out. I could have done without the Wonder Woman scene in the first hour too. That just you probably silly could have cut a half hour out of it easy. Yeah, of course. You know. Our buddy Jim Murray, not to be confused with Big Jim Murray from the Sports Hub, we actually love two Jim Murrays in this household. Um, our our buddy Jim is a huge uh, DC fan, specifically uh, Batman, Batman. Yeah. But he he had been talking about the Snyder Cut. Oh, it's coming, forever. baby! It's coming, baby! Like that, it was somehow going to make DC better than Marvel in the movie department. No, not still not happening. Um, but I begrudgingly admit it was great. I had a good time. You're going to have to watch it in pieces. It's four hours long, people. None of us have that kind of time. Uh, you know what I didn't know? I didn't realize. Snyder, right? Zach, yes. Zack Snyder? Yes. He did 300. Great, great flick. Right. Stylized uh, violence. Excellent. You know, uh, he did the Watchmen movie. Oh, that makes sense. Which is... My favorite DC movie, by like a long shot. Right, although the TV show was better. Yeah. You say tomato, I say tomato. I'll have to go back and watch it again. I know, we, I think, didn't we watch it again recently or part of it? It just, it feels dated in a way that the TV show doesn't. Um, but yeah. Uh, is Zack Snyder a bit egotistical with that or is it me? No, we definitely felt there was a little pomposity happening there. Um, Lewis said, how about that cool song when Captain Beefcake was diving in the ocean? <laughs> how dare you talk about my Jason Lewis, Momoa? Listen. <laughs> Captain Beefcake. Uh, That's awkward to you, Beefcake. buddy. Um, Lewis Warren, Watchmen is still great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely felt like it was, um, it was a much better movie. The first one was garbage. I'm sorry. Uh, was it Joss Whedon who who had to go in and recut that? It was terrible. It, it just and it had yeah, but no I think it was because they anything. they messed they messed with his cut, I guess. And but the other thing that's interesting, like you're you're gonna have a big bad that isn't really the big bad. There's another big bad, but you're gonna spend the whole movie on the sub big bad. Like that doesn't jive with me. Um, Michael but, Maloney gives me another vote for the Watchmen. Watchmen, the movie was point on, not on point. Michael the only thing that they strayed away from and what was surprising when you went and watched the TV series was that the method of terrorizing the world, uh, there was no mention of like cosmic squid in the, in the movie. You but know? it is in the comics, right? Yeah, so... Nah. Yeah, again, that's a point where I there's guess. not enough creative control and all the suits go, oh, this is too crazy. The people aren't going to get that. Or they put it in the movie and then they showed it to test audiences and they were like, nope, it's out. Malin Ackerman was pretty hot in that. But her mother, the woman who played her mother, Carla Gugino. <laughs> Carla Gugino is a smoke she's show. special. Like at any age. Yeah. Really. She's amazing. So I just want to swim in her eyes. We may. <laughs> really? Go on. I dive in there. Okay, you can do that as long as I can hang out with Jason Momoa and his pecs. I'm cool with that. That would be totally fine. Um, 
so uh, we also watched Snowpiercer finally from the other night. And may I just say, I know we talk about Mike O'Malley a lot and we're privileged enough to have, you know, met and hung out with him a few times because he has a lot of mutual friends with us, including his BFF, Bill Janowitz. Um, and he's just such a nice, awesome guy. But oh my God, this episode, he had some scenes. Yeah. Like eating up those scenes, Mike O'Malley. Like, yeah, we, we were definitely so dug it. excited. Yeah. And Sean Bean as Wilford, the bad train, you oh, know, engineer. Man. Matt, Nate, he's, oh my he's, God. Yeah. We just want to throttle him. Like he's, he's so, so mean and oh, awful he's just and sleepy. vicious and just ah. yeah. He makes you want to take a shower. Um, and I he, do go he ahead. He was great this episode. Though. Yeah, like you really he just was really kill great. Him. Like you know? you're you're hoping the characters just like end him. Like you really just I'm want like, them yeah, to like you're within like arm's length of this guy. Like a pencil so, in the oh, neck. Oh, that'd be so awesome. Right there. Um, and I have a confession to make. I'm totally into Superman and Lois from the CW. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, listen, you know. I don't understand it either. That's I cool. think it's because it's more about their kids. And and it's really like different and fleshed out, and um, there are a lot of other aliens coming and hanging out. And I don't know, I dig it. I'm into it. What can I say? She's I'm into, into Malacus, Superman Dino. and Lois. I'm into Malacca's Dino. Um, Sean Bean is a treasure. Normally, I agree. I mean, yes, he is a treasure, but man, you just love to hate him in Snowpiercer. It's nice when he's a good guy. Like when he was, you know, Ned Stark. Yeah. He was great. But you knew Ned, when he, he knew was, he was gonna die because he doesn't no play nice way, guys. Dude, that happened That's so true. fast. Yep. Are you when that happened, everyone went, What? The main character, what? Yeah. yeah. But it was too good to be true because Sean Bean usually plays a terribly flawed character. Uh yeah. as in the uh what was it? The Lord of the, Lord Rings, of the Rings series. Yeah. 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 Spoiler alert. His character's not awesome. Although I think he gets redeemed. In the Boromir, yeah. right? Am I right, guys? Boromir, look it up. Tell I me. believe so. Yeah. Um, From Gondor, right? He was the captain of Gondor or something like that? Uh, or yeah. Or a captain of Gondor? I mean, we're literally staring. Like, this wall is Star Wars, but the wall opposite us is a, a five foot it's, by it's four five foot. It's five by four foot map of Middle map Earth. Map of Middle Earth. Yeah. Um, so, so when know. we watch on the TV, we're like, oh, they're here right now. And I get out the laser. I get out the here. laser pointer and I'm like, they're gonna go along these mountains and then they're gonna go through the stream over here. Uh, so um, you know, the elephant in the room, maybe, or maybe not, is the fact that I've gone camo crazy. As oh, you know. Mess with her um, head. Yeah. I'm like the dude in boomerang. You got to coordinate. Bam, mushroom lining. Nope, it's all camouflage. Bam, camouflage leggings. Bam, camouflage water bottle. Water bottle. Water bottle. <laughs> In case you riddles more like Borophil. Am I right? I had the vaccine yesterday, so I'm a little loopy. Oh, Casey, did you have the Pfizer or the Moderna? Which one? Which one? Uh, the Pfizer knocked me on my bootay for a bit uh, the day after. And I think Holly had some similar... Um, side effects if you will i mean it's not really a side effect you're happy the damn thing is working but it is a little like whoa what just happened did somebody just knock me out and i woke up and my pants are gone like it's that kind of thing um so music the rammstein most, obviously rammstein nine <laughs> how many and i know a lot of you were there saturday night who hung out Saturday night, 80s night on Twitch and danced their butts off? Hey. I know Sam Mavola was there. I didn't dance a whole lot. My knee was bothering was me. Was Bob Tarasi there? I feel like Bob was in the house. Casey got the Johnson and Johnson. Um, and the one-timer. Oh, Casey, look at you. Nobody likes to show off. He's a hockey fan. He's into those one-timers. Nice. Yeah, uh, Kevin Tachi was there. Um, we had we had a huge crowd. It was fun. So much fun. And I love uh dancing as an extra form of exercise. Joshua too. is amazing, Sammy. He yeah. is. Yeah. Right? So Mikey thinks that uh the response was so good that he's gonna maybe do an 80s uh once a month as well. Right. So you're looking at twice a month you'll get some Mikey Joshua. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm cool with that. And the next time we tell you, you're going to have to attend. Virtually. Hey! Oh, I didn't is. even know he was there. We had so much fun. And Holly, didn't we dance? We danced. And everybody's, almost everybody's requests were played. Even yours. Uh, well, I requested the power station. Bang that was dog, my call, though. Which is his call. But that's just one of our songs we like to, you know. You had to do dance the to. bass. The, uh, there was another song where the bass was so funky. And then was I'm it, like, you got to stop getting on the funky bass. Was it bass. Prince Get Off? Prince Get Off got yeah, played. Yeah, um, but you requested something that was a little off the beaten path, and now I can't think of what it was. And it was in more of an R and B range, was it not? What cameo candy? Maybe. No, I thought there was something else. Huh. Um, oh, Josh says twice a month. Oh, we like that. I could do twice. Oh, a wait month. a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! So that is that. Three. 80s. So 80s twice a month. And, and then, then uh, X night once a month. Which is mostly So 90s. that's three. I, I'm sorry, Mike. I got my shoes on. <laughs> I can't count that high. Does he play Madonna and Wham? I think there was definitely a healthy dose of cheese. Yeah, there was definitely. Um, listen, don't, you're not above it. I mean, not it. like Jitterbug. I don't think there was any no, Jitterbug. The he said one and one, right. Yeah. Why did I get confused? I don't know. You confused sorry. me. One X night, one eighties. Okay, it's twice lies. as much money. I don't care. We're talking out of school. I don't care how I get it. I just want twice as much, Josh. X night. Um, but thank were, you, Mike. I was right. Thank you, Mike. Um, it was so much. Fun. I always liked you. And Mike. the only thing that's difficult is you're chatting with people while it's all happening. Like we throw it up on our television set, so it's huge on the wall. But I've also got my iPad open, so I'm chatting with people. And then Dave's got his on his iPhone, and he's chatting with people. And then a song comes on, and you're like, "That's my jam! I gotta go up!" But like, you also want to keep talking to people, so it's like, you know, you got to make some tough decisions. <laughs> Nikki T. What is X like that art damage crybaby stuff? <laughs> Nikki T, did you never go to X night in the 90s or the 2000s? The it's the F and X night downstairs at Axis, although it was upstairs too. Um, but it was a lot of like just, it's not too good for you. No, I mean everything from like ministry and primus to um, you know, depeche mode and uh, it was all yeah, it's not place. all yeah, it's not all it shoe games or anything. Like yeah. That. Uh, question what song makes you run to the dance floor every time uh well prince get off like every time pretty much any sexy mf like you know almost any prince song will get me right on the dance floor uh sex machine by james brown yeah uh, uh anything by james brown anything by me. uh cameo <laughs> nikki t i never left somerville in the 90s okay got it uh anything by cameo really they're pretty good no, they're great, but their two hit singles are pale in comparison to the rest of their music, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? What song uh, gets you to the dance floor? I like some old school jams too, like No Parking on the Dance Floor. That'll get me on. Oh, um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Spinning. Yeah, Hollywood Swingin', swingin', by, uh, swingin', swingin'. by uh, Cool and the cool gang. gang. Almost anything by Cool and the Gang will get yeah, me on, but that yeah, one. Yeah. Duh, 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 duh. yeah, definitely. Um, Sam of Ola, Prince gone five years today. Oh, really? Yeah. Five was, years? That can't be five years ago. Jesus. But it was because we were together, but it was early. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jump of Love, anything by the time, and I'm on the dance floor. Oh, we, oh, we, oh, absolutely. Um, That's the most I ever paid to go to a concert. What? Prince. Oh, yeah, I've heard the Prince story. Do you want to tell them the Prince story? No, not especially. I'm okay. just saying, you know, 400 I, something dollars people, later. I went, people ask me we all the to, time, um, like, what go was ahead. It? What's the play? Uh, what's Mohegan the, or was Foxwood? Mohegan? I think it might have been, I don't know. I don't know. Mohegan, I think. I think it was Uncasville. I saw Prince. He did a series of shows when I lived in LA at the Forum. And they were $20 shows. And it was incredible. But I saw Prince years ago, years and years ago in the 90s, late 90s, at the Worcester Palladium with Maceo Parker with wow. him. And 
it was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen in my life. If not the most technically, technically, like all of his musicians are the best of the best. He's the best of the best. Like it was just, you got your money's worth and then some, like you just, there aren't shows like that anymore. Like there's always that lull where you're like, ah, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. You never stop moving at a print show ever. You got to hold it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anytime, uh, I was very lucky to see Prince and I'm sorry if you didn't, cause it was great. I, I got caught holding it one time at a show where they asked me to leave. <laughs> Michael Maloney should have come with me. I had extra tickets for the garden for the musicology tour. Well, Michael, let's just jump back in our time machine and get <laughs> Dave and you together. <laughs> Weird oh, flex, Maloney. Sure Weird Set flex. the way back machine. Uh, Sean O'Brien agrees the Maceo tours were the absolute best. Agreed. Just spectacular. And uh, the thing I learned at the forum shows is how incredibly funny Prince was. Like his banter and he was telling jokes and, you know, making fun of himself. Hilarious. You always, like whenever you would see him being interviewed, he hated it. You could tell he hated it. Mm -hmm. And he was always like, very, you know, soft-spoken and one-word answers and, you know, wasn't giving you anything. Like, you could tell he was a terrible interview. Um, you know, he wanted this mystique about him. But then when you go to his show, he was so much fun and so funny. Um, and then you'd also forget until you got there that he could play every instrument and that he was an incredible guitar player. If not, like, that's the weird Don't thing about the Prince. Best guitar player. I'm not saying he's the best guitar player, but that is not the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Prince, and it should have been. I think a high heel shoes. I think a lot of people do, and a, a lot of people think yeah. of the scandalousness, you know, especially of the earlier stuff. Um, but really, his guitar playing is yeah, phenomenal. It's, really it's phenomenal. Uh, Riddles, wait, have Dave and Prince been seen in the same room? <laughs> you really got it out for Dave tonight, Riddles. We might need to shut you what off. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. Listen, um, he shows enough pictures of where he lives, like from from his balcony. Yeah, Riddles does have, to, you know. I've been able to triangulate exactly where he is. Riddles has a nice you, set of digs, like I'll because he is uh, overlooking um, the waterfront. Um, it's adjacent to uh, what you will call it, right? It's not Columbus Park, no in that area. It's near the. It's, it's near, the, near uh, the north end, but it's not the north end. No, it's am the I north right? End. Is it the north end? Yeah. But it's yeah, but it's yeah. Okay. Oh, it's the north end. Um, it's on the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's still the north end. Well, I guess. But when I think of the north, what are you end, talking think, about? You guess. What are you like the the person who tells everyone where like they are? Salem Street. Oh no, I'm not, you're not from Charleston. You're from the extension of Everett because I think of it like that. Are you done? I'll have you killed. <laughs> Somebody's a little punchy. I'm so tired. I know you are, baby. We're almost done. Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, Dave is funny too. <laughs> All right, Sean O'Brien has a little oh, friend. I miss you. Sean O'Brien, first time I saw him, I was 14. Oh my God. And saw him on Dirty Mind. Wow. As part of a ridiculous tour with the Bar -Kays. They were always with the Bar -Kays. That is amazing, Sean. Wow, that's incredible. The Dirty Mind Show. I, I know that he played the Paradise and some people that we know were there and it was like crazy. And he, I think he came out, you know, in some pretty fancy uh, negligee kind of duds. I think he had some sort of fishnet stocking situation and a cod piece, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me. Um, Nikki T, ha ha, Everett. You guys and your little towny jokes. I love it. Um, there were a lot of musical streaming events this weekend. Sam Mavola actually talked about it a little bit uh, online earlier, uh, I think Monday. So Juliana Hatfield did another uh, live stream on Saturday. Will Daly did a great live stream on Sunday. I caught the tail end of it because I had some other stuff going on. But man, you know, he just loves to make people happy and people just love to let him. I love me some Will Daly. I love me some Will Daly. 
Uh, also, uh, I think Will Daly's newborn baby may be getting the better of him. He did look a little tired, although I did come at the end of like a three hour show. So, uh, but it, in either way, big hugs to Will Daly. Hashtag Tiger Beat. We love you. Um, any other music live streaming stuff that we mix, miss that maybe we want to talk about? Riddles, what's the mass holiest thing Dave has ever said? <laughs> I don't know that there's like a particular saying, although I will say, oh, well, the way you say uh, certain words obviously is very, I wouldn't say it's mass holiest though. It's just very Charlestown. Um, but the thing I love most about Dave is that we drive over the town line of Charles, like into Charlestown and his accent immediately gets like 40% thicker and he knows everybody and everybody's name Sully don't know everybody. or whatever. And yeah, it's uh, it was just that one time we drove by <laughs> Sully, and I was like, I saw him, like, I did. I was yeah. like, Really? Yeah, it was uh, pretty yeah. funny. Yeah, it was Sam, like on cue. Sam Abola, I paid that guy to be there on the corner. Oh, Sean O'Brien, trench coat and frilly panties, as I recall. I was close with Prince's first tour, I was close. Um, I don't know. Is there anything like particularly mass holiest that you say? So, so you're saying we're mass holes, right? Paul, well, aren't we? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm proud of that. Oh, uh, the Billy Costigan effect. You know, it's funny, Mike Maloney. Uh, Billy Costigan is the character that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio played in The Departed. Oh, okay. And uh, he was, you know, he had one side of his family that was like street. And one side of his family was like lace curtain Irish. You know, they're like the, the upper crust of the Irish, you know. So when he went over to one place, he acted a certain way. And, you know, but with me, uh, you know, my mother's from the Selby Projects. And my father's from Charlestown. And yet he wanted to escape and join the Yacht Club. Though. Oh, my Let's God. Be I honest. wanted to be a preppy so bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, did you want to be a preppy or did you want to be a Kennedy? Well, I mean. Obviously, I want to be a candidate. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny because like, you know, and I told this story many times when I was um, separated, and, you know, going through my divorce. Um, I was in California, but I really missed my Boston boys and I really missed that accent. And I kept watching the town and the departed like on a loop over and over and over again because I missed, you know, the, the salt of the earth. Dudes, you uh, move on to California. Else? You're not finding Salt that stuff in LA, earth. let me tell you. Um, I mean, you can go down to the LBC and get a little rougher, but it's not the same as it <laughs> is here. And ladies, sometimes we need, you know, a rough guy to make sure they can take care of us properly, handle us, if you will. Uh, and so I'm gonna choke you out. With that he that's sure. why I call him my unicorn, because I found my townie, my hard-edged townie, who's also super sweet and uh love star wars and my nerd like culture and um i work with my hands he's a great partner and of course he works with his hands very important tool belt all of that was all the prerequisite so but i remember i was date i was doing online dating and some guy said well what are you looking for and i said exactly what i just said and he goes that doesn't exist you're looking for a unicorn i go yeah well i'll find it and i did and listen after the tranquilizer diet wore off <laughs> She put my, she put me at ease, um, you know, oh, after, God. after a couple of days, uh, she, uh, unshackled me <laughs> and I was able to have bread and water. Let's be honest, Dave, you were super into me until you found out that part-time DJs don't make any money. <laughs> that is one of the biggest, like um misconceptions of me and what i do like i always have a day job i always have something else going on i mean yeah in the 90s i was working full time but i was still working for peanuts you know i was happy to be working for peanuts at the time but peanuts <laughs> peanuts, peanuts. Oh. um but it, it's it's difficult when you have, I'm very friend rich. I have a lot of amazing friends. I'm very lucky. And you are all in there as well. Um, I also subsequently are friends with people who have money and it stinks because you all get 
roped in together and it's like dude i can't pay for that meal yeah i don't think i can join I sorry need, did anybody have change for a dollar yeah so uh i may lead a very fabulous lifestyle on occasion but i assure you it's on a low budget nothing wrong with that <laughs> it's respectable um, Although, uh, just going back to the town, Blake Lively, yeah. Listen, I told you people before, <laughs> there aren't any girls that look like Blake Lively that are from Charlestown. I mean, they tried kid. to make At her least look they really weren't. beat up. They tried know? to make her look kind of scuzzy, but it was like... It's hard. It's hard to make Blake Lively look bad. It's just not going to happen. Although I thought she did a decent job with the accent. Yeah, you know, that whole thing where she talks about chasing the tail, like... I could see that happening. Whatever. Um, that was a weird noise. What, what was that? <laughs> we just had a really weird, creepy. It like, sounded like a, a, a like horror a horse. movie noise. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Um, so this is the part of the show where we get to the eat, make, and bake when we don't have a guest. Obviously, we don't have a guest this week. Um, I wasn't concerned with getting a guest this week. I don't think we need to have one every week. Of course, if you want to be on the show, just let me know. We'll put you on. Um, except you, Riddles. Yeah, he's already been just on. Kidding. And, uh, you know. No, I think Riddles could be our Terry Barr. Really. I think he has to go to the back of the line. Do you guys remember this? He's when, been very flipped this evening. If David Letterman was ever uh, without a guest or something happened, um, he would he was dating Terry Barr like secretly for years or whatever. So he would just have her. That's why she was on the show so many times. I love so, Terry Gar. Yeah, we, Riddles could be our, our Terry Gar. That Charlestown accent is weird with peanuts. <laughs> uh, is is the I'd rather be happy than right? Is that a Charlestown thing? No. No. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, because I've never heard anybody say it except you, really. Like, in real life, I've seen it on television. No, that's a, that's a, like an AA thing. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Um, that's neither here nor there. That's very masculine. That's neither here nor there. Kid. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say the s word because I don't want Ethan to have to um, bleep it out later. But when you say hot, yeah, or you call yeah, you come call you never, somebody a hot. Or listen, are you really doing that? What? Oh. Ethan's a big boy with his big boy pants on. He can cut it out if they say if somebody says it when you say somebody's a hot like that's very mass hole don't Listen. you think or irregardless which right. i hate but you know or supposedly or how, how about this like when somebody was bad at something or they weren't good or whatever my grandfather papa dow god rest his soul <laughs> used to call him a shit bump oh my god we're just gonna keep swearing now poor Ethan's nah, I mean, writing all this thing. you ask about you know does anybody say that in 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 the uh, you know in other parts of the country? Uh, probably not. Yeah. Ethan says he forgives us. Everybody say hi to Ethan, by the way. He's uh, he's taken the reins from um, executive producer Kevin Tachi this evening. He's learning the ropes. He's getting his wings. Is that enough sayings for that? Oh boy, Clarence. Yeah. Hey, what? Dave. Yes. Hi. Okay. Okay. Nikki T agrees. <laughs> Louis Warren says his brother says that, but nobody else. Louis, we're not talking about your brother right now because Dave doesn't know that story. Moving on. Polly B fave. Oh, really? All right. Mike Tasha says it's a Polly B fave. Good to know. Polly B from the. Uh, oh, now we drop an F bomb. Oh, Ethan, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm wicked tired. I'm sorry. I'm so ashamed. Oh my goodness. Yes, Paul Buckley, drummer from Orbit and all around awesome oh, guy. Oh, okay, okay. Ethan, no more forgiveness. That's it. You all right, that's off. it. No, no more, more swear amnesty. words. No more amnesty for you. <sighs> so um I'm not eating a lot right now. Um, and we can talk about that another time. I'm just doing a lot of like protein shakes and puddings right now. Um, so Dave has, uh, taken the reins in the cooking department. Um, so we shall see what food's going to look like next week. Okay. So look, I went to Aldi's this week by yeah, myself, by himself, which is very, okay. it's a deadly thing by myself. Dave 
doesn't know the size of the fridge when he gets into a store and has money in his pocket. We have a very small fridge with a tiny freezer. And he comes home with so much crap. It was like Jenga times a thousand trying to get everything into the fridge. It was ridiculous. Some people are just better at spatial relations than others, huh? Some people are better at restraint while shopping than others. Because yeah. here's the other thing. We have all this food in the house that only I eat or only me and Dave eat. It's all going to go bad because I'm not eating it it's right not, now. What food? Like the cucumbers and the green onions and Your daughter the eats cucumbers. purple onions and the white onions. No, well, that, you all of the on, onions. You insisted on getting that stuff. Yeah, well, so it's I, not know. my fault you want to smell like an Italian sub all the time. Jeez. Yeah, because I'm the only one in this house that smells like an Italian sub. Hold the hearts. <laughs> uh, but we did do, uh, I did a mashed cauliflower. We like to do um, like a loaded mashed cauliflower. So it's like loaded mashed potatoes, but it's cauliflower. And we didn't Dude, have any sour cream. To think of that. We didn't have any sour cream. And I was like, oh my God, what are you going to do? We had bacon bits. And we had um, cheese and 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 scallion, um, but I was like, "What are we gonna do?" And we had some low fat ricotta left, and I used Rada. that. Nah. It was fantastic. So just Rada. letting you guys know, if you want to do uh, some mashed, if you're sick of the rice cauliflower, try a little low fat ricotta. It was pretty good. Um, um I if I may. Yes, go right ahead. Take Appreciate over the it. show, Dave. It's all yours. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I want to talk to everyone today about the fact that I've come back to drinking milk. I know it sounds strange. I've been away from the milk for a long time. But uh, I ended up trying the Fair Life. Uh, what is it? It's, the, uh, it's got no... Um, it's no lactose. No lactose right? in it, guys. Okay. So now, after, after drinking only like almond milk for like years at this point, okay, I drink full, you're killing me. What? Oh my God. You're being so rude to me right now. No, we went off on the No, nope. so anyway. Uh, oh, whole, Holly can't try it. We'll never do cauliflower rice. How whole dare fat, you? Guys. Full uh, fat, full fat. Full fat, no lactose. It tastes like dessert. It's heavenly tasting. <laughs> Nikki T, onions don't need to go in the fridge. Nikki T, I'm not going to be eating onions for a while. So that's why. All right, guys, I'm just saying, try it. <gasps> Riddles thinks I look like Princess Leia with the hood up. That's it. The hood is staying up. Help me, Obi-Wan. No? <laughs> riddles uh you know what happened when the cow jumped over the barbed wire fence utter destruction utter destruction that's a lovely dad joke so what are you making today speaking of all these uh there is in the crock pot there is a uh shoulder pork shoulder but it's already was, been pre-seasoned as carnitas it, it, yeah exactly so it's it's been cooking for about 12 hours and let me tell you when something smells that good in your house all day and you're uh relegated to protein shakes and smoothies and puddings torture absolute torture well honey we could put it in a blender right no i can't have any of that right now sweetie i just have not to have a, what i have not no. even a little a little no, it's not like i have something wrong with my teeth a little bit a little liquid i'm on carnitas. a very strict low cal high protein situation right now hmm. i guess i'll have to eat your share then we'll talk more about that next week um vicky i use unsweetened almond milk for coffee use regular milk for making yogurt oh i like that's that. i think that's why i tried it vicky yeah. because my brother was like hey we can make yogurt as long as you use like the ultra filtered uh fair life one. Oh right that's right and i was why like we got that you're I was right like, i'm gonna I try it and that. then i tried it and i'm like oh my god no, uh, good call there, Vicky. Um, I've been uh, addicted to the nut pod creamer 
Anybody else addicted to nut pod creamers? Especially now that our Ninja Kitchen Station, by the way, we're not getting any money from that company you whatsoever. You can foam. Uh, you can, it has a, a little whisk attachment so you can foam your creamer of choice, hot or cold. You just put it up there and press the button and it whirs it's like a little elbow. I'm becoming elbow like motor in there. a barista. I like did a little like thing today. Yeah, it I, like actually, a heart. Like, I actually like to do a leaf. It is awesome. Yeah. I will never go to Starbucks again. <laughs> I've heard milk does the body good, but that's just big dairy propaganda. Uh, right, Maricotti, exactly. I'm right there with you. I had to lie to my pediatrician when Kendall was little and insist that she was drinking milk when she wasn't because i don't believe that milk is necessary for children uh milk is necessary for baby cows exactly it's that's i'm my whole thing is is that it's made for baby cows it's not made for people no it's not and the dairy that whole that's why the uh, lactose situation yeah. is so problematic because right. cows have four stomachs guys four i mean we don't want to get like super political here but it is kind of a sham um, and we're the only country that, you know, has that big of a need, if you will, on uh, cattle and, and, and milk specifically. Like she ate enough cheese and yogurt and ice cream. What is, she got her dairy. It was not an issue. And I understand vitamin D is good for, you know, strong bones and all so of that. So go in the sun. You can get it other ways. Uh, you know what has a lot of vitamin D? A lot, a lot, line please. You know what has a lot of vitamin D? Mushrooms, they have like the most vitamin D. Get yourself some mushrooms, Nikki T. I saw your thing earlier. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge nut pod creamer uh, addict at this point. And it's creamy and delightful and I love it. And I use it for my coffee. It doesn't compare with the real milk. Uh, Casey Riddle's breakfast is a myth too. Most other countries just eat whatever in the morning. I agree. Listen, America, we're just not that great. Well, on that note, let's wrap it up. <laughs> oh, well, Dave needs to go to sleep. You guys, we flew through that. Did we? I mean, I think you napped a little. It was a little more work. Oh. <laughs> How dare you? I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. I'm very hurt right now. <laughs> Nikki T, Magic Mushrooms. Poor Bob Tarasi. Either we're having a horrible cut day off or, or he has horrible Wi-Fi. He's he just been wants us to know he's watching. Constantly. We get it, Bob. We know you're here. Uh, yeah, Nikki T, USA. America has the best sugary cereals with shrimp tails. Oh, my God. Did you see that? What? And um, Bean of the famous Kevin and Bean LA uh, morning show. He now has a, a morning show with Allie. Uh, but he's in England and it's called, I think it's like cup of tea with Bean and Allie. And they had the guy on yesterday who found shrimp tails in his, like, it wasn't Lucky Charms, but it was some sugary cereal. It's all over the internet. Can you imagine? Like, that is so nasty, right? Like of all the things, even like a little sugary, like right, dead you're mouse eating, would be you better you know, you're not than supposed to eat. shrimp tails. Oh, good Lord. You're not supposed to eat while you're on the production line, buddy. Can you imagine like swallowing one of those? A little rip your throat out. Like, they're not nice, like at all. It's almost like if you didn't chew a brand new... <laughs> Uh, Apple Jack, you know. Like, um, not... Sam Mavola says time flies when you're dropping f bombs. Very true. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Jensen Carp, he's Topanga's husband. That's right. And somehow is he related in some way or form, or is friends with Fred Durst because they were all in the show together? And I wasn't sure how that worked. But yes, the girl who played Topanga on Boy Meets World is married to this dude who found the shrimp tails in his cereal. Can you not? Are you working on your art right now? Like you look like some dude who wouldn't give God, me the time mom. of day freshman year of college. That's oh, terrible. Man. <laughs> and oh. now you're bashing the fish biz. First milk. Thank you, T. I love fish. Come on. Yeah, but uh, nobody loves shrimp, but I don't want shrimp tails in my cereal. cereal. Nikki. <laughs> That's just out of bounds. Not even some weird Italians <laughs> when it's Christmas time. They don't even want the, sh 
the shrimp tails in their cereal. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. We don't know who the special guest will be next week. Who knows? But maybe it'll be a very special episode anyway. Um, the finished product will be posted on our page right here this weekend. You can also see it on Abington Cam's YouTube page. And then it gets put out into the universe and all over cable access. I believe we just got picked up by another station actually. So I think we're about 15 stations. Again, if you catch us on cable access, community access, take a picture and send this to us and we'll send you something. Also hit up that Venmo tip jar uh, as uh, we do need underwriting to keep our show sustainable and every little bit counts. And we all know you got your stimmy checks because we did too. <laughs> Later, people! But, uh, you know, I did uh, dole some out to the live streams this weekend for sure. When I have money, I'm very generous. Mm. So maybe you are too. Venmo at DJNGC. We love you guys. Holly says fun show tonight. Woohoo! Yes, and uh, they all want you to get some sleep. A very special episode next week for sure. Um, yes, Kevin Tachi says, please take care of our hosts. Well, we like to take care of you and watch crappy stuff so you don't have to. So we'll see you next week. We love you. Ethan, great job tonight. Ethan. Good job. Do me a favor. Clean that shit up. <laughs> and we're out. Bye-bye.